Hi, this is Dan Heisman, Philly Tutor for Chess FM. This is the Improve Your Chess video series for ICC members. In today's game, we're going to look at a 65 game. All right, so White plays the unusual move, Knight to C3. This is usually transpositional. The most likely openings that you'll get into here would be a Virasov or a Pierce, but it's also possible you might get into a French. How could you get each of those? Well, d, uh, d5, d4, knight f6, bishop g5 is a Virasov. Um, after knight c3, um, if black plays something like knight f6, d4, d6, e4, g6, you have a Pierce. A French, how would you get a French? Well, you could go e6 d4, d5, e4, and get into the classical French. Turns out this game does none of those. After knight c3, d5, d4, instead of the normal knight f6, black plays the unusual move of also blocking his break move. You know, when you have these double d-pawn games, the main break moves are c4 and c5, and that's why the queen's gambit is much, much, much more popular than a Virasov. Uh, not the Verisov is terrible, but if you play the Verisov and you don't know what you're doing, you usually get a cramped game. And I always say to my students when they do this, unless they're a higher rated student who's playing a Verisov on purpose, I say, you know, didn't you kind of get a cramped game out of this? You know, it's kind of hard to get a break move in and open up lines for your rooks. And they almost always go, yeah, how did you know? All right, so here white plays knight f3. Um in a sense threatening to play e4. If he plays e4 right away and black takes and white takes back, black should just play queen takes d4 and say, good, I'm up a pawn, would you like to trade queens? Knight takes d4 is also winning a pawn, of course, but not quite as well, much to the point. I see amateurs do this all the time. They they take with the knight, which is you know not terrible, but most things would tell you to take with the queen. It's the undeveloped piece. And you always want to say to your opponent when you're winning, you know, trade or retreat. All right, so white plays knight f3 and black plays knight f6. And now neither side can break. So we're going to get kind of a mutually cramped position. Bishop to f4. And black could have played bishop f5 also. He decides to play e6. And now if white plays knight to b5, black simply plays bishop to d6 and defends, and if white wants to win the bishop pair, it's going to cost him a couple tempos, which would keep the game pretty even. Instead, white just plays e3, and now it makes sense for black to play bishop d6 anyway. Black plays a6, but knight to b5 really wasn't a threat. It's not that a6 is a terrible move there, it's not, but you know, we can consider it at least a minor waste of time. And white plays bishop d3. Uh, if we look at the clocks now, white's made every move basically instantly. And black's been thinking. That doesn't necessarily mean that white knows this is a book line. In fact, I would highly doubt it since uh, knight c6 on the second move for black is highly unusual. So I think white's just playing too fast. All right, black neutralizes the bishop. In white castles, he certainly could have taken the bishop. But now if black plays bishop takes bishop, in his book on the London, which this resembles now, uh, Kovacevic, I think, calls these two pawns on d4 and f4, the fat pigs, where they're putting a lot of pressure on e5, and even though white has double pawns on the f file, um, he's got a semi-open e file to work with, he's got a break move on f5 to play with, and he's pretty much clamped down on black center. So... That could have happened. Instead, black goes for the bishop pair.